It's the Hip Hop Matrix Show. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. It's the Hip Hop Matrix Show with Jay Hall and DJ Academics. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. Let's get it. Yeah, myself, Jay Hall, this guy right here, DJ Academics. Welcome, Hip Hop Matrix Show. What's happening, man? How you feeling? Oh, I'm getting there, brother. I've been struggling with this um, this headache for like, I had, a, I had a really, really bad headache for like a week. And I guess I just got to start taking care of myself more because the doctor, I went to the doctor. So I didn't just sit on my butt on some like, yeah, I'm, I can handle this. And the doctor told me it was a tension headache. Tension headache? Yeah, like tension slash stress headache. Yeah. Who's getting to you? Because it felt like a ring. Life, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> life. I mean, that chick could do it too. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Punching me in my left eye. Like, crap, crap, crap. It ain't nothing I can do about it. You know, life. <laughs> so, um, yeah, man, you know, one thing I will say about the experience is you got you to gotta go to the doctor, bro. You can't be on some, like, when you're feeling some sort of pain, whatever, just ignoring it. Like, those days are over. I, I realized, like, the older I got, the less... The less, like, I can take emotional pain, but physical pain, I'm like, ah, ah, no, doctor. Like, I need, I need to go holler at the doctor, dog. <laughs> like, Just tapping out. Yeah, quick. man. Yeah. And I'm like a sucker. Like, I ain't got time for the tough guy stuff, man. None of that. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I've been drinking my water and making sure I've been watching myself and, you know, trying to figure out ways where I can relieve my stress other besides just kind of, like, working out some other stuff. So um, I'm probably going to get exercise into Exercise is good. Man, sex is always amazing. Yeah, sex is You know, sex is amazing. But, you know, my anxiety might kick in. Sometimes I be thinking when I'm about to get ready to have sex, I think about the end before I think about the actual end. What? <laughs> <laughs> I might be like, ah, oh, it's too much work. Thinking about the end. <laughs> she, you Bernie know, Mac now. last time I really put it on, you know, she probably <laughs> want me to do all this extra. I don't feel like doing that today. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. Well, what, dog? That's what it is, man. Terrible, it's, just, man. It's, just, it's just what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? What's good with you? I can't complain, man. Nothing like what you're talking about right there. I'll tell, <laughs> tell you that much. I'll tell you that much for well, sure. You gonna be here drinking your juices? Yeah, well, I mean that's that's just the body cleanses, keeping my stuff, keeping myself right. You know, every time I get a little off my diet, you know, gotta hit the reset button. Boom, get it back right. What did you eat? So like, I had some Chinese food. That's that's you know that might be race. We just saying all Chinese food is just bad. Yeah, the shrimp fried rice. Or is it takeout. Uh, it was takeout Chinese okay. food. Yeah, <laughs> it's all that to... rice. I really don't need to do, do bread and carbs, so I ate a bunch of rice with that. So it was, yeah, they just threw me off. So I need to get that out, get that quickly out my system. Did you have it like late at night too? That, uh, that what I had it like today. You was no, I ain't having late at night, but I did eat late at night last night too, though. So yeah, I need to get all that out my system. So how long does it take for the cleanse that you just? Cause you hit, literally drink, yeah, like drink six, it right in front of me. So how long like, it take? Like five, six hours. Oh, okay. So you're not about to be running in between nah, the show. Nah, 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 nah. Like five, six hours. I time it out so I know I'm in the house when I. Oh, yeah. okay. So you ain't hanging out after this. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Being in the club, like, oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> like none of that good stuff. Uh, shout out to the Made in DMV conference. I was there today. It was real dope. It's the third one actually. I didn't realize it was. Uh, I. I thought last year was the first one, but it was good. It was good to see a lot of people um, there. I uh, met a lot of people from the industry that came through, you know, this area. And sometimes um, D.C. gets, I don't know, when you're living in it, you can kind of think it gets overlooked when it comes to, like, you know, talent and creatives and things of that nature. But it's a lot of people that came through there, um, like like Broccoli City came through um, um, and Pizza, um, shout out to my sis DJ Heat. She hosted the panel and she was on and the panel. Pizza came through. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that might be last year when they came through. Well, anyway, well, yeah. My sis DJ Heat. She was on the panel and she hosted a, a DJ panel. Shout out to her. Yeah, and it's always um some of the you know what I like in some panels. It's kind of like oh, Quicksilver's there. Shout out to him. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always like um comes sometimes like the same question like you know how how can I get on, you know type of questions that you always seem to get. And I thought that, you know, we probably kind of got past that with the social media era and SoundCloud. You know, a lot of these artists are putting themselves on this new era. So it's interesting to see that certain people still want to, like, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I thought, like, the kids really don't be trying to get their songs on the radio no more. I thought they were just happy with just YouTube. But they still do. Some of them, a lot of them still do. Yeah, it's, radio still has its impact. It's, it's not the only way to impact now, of course, but Still, radio is still here for a reason. Yeah, it, I think it's just important to know that radio is playing off the reaction of the streets. 
Correct. Not vice versa. Yeah. It's you not know? influencing as much. It's not an influencer. It's a more of a... a, 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 a Reactor. Uh, I wouldn't even say that. It's kind of like a bandwagoner. Oh, it's kinda okay. Like, Radio is kind of like a bandwagon fan. Okay. That's real. Nah, they 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 love you when you're hot. Though. No, all. that is real. That is real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You number one. It's, it's a bandwagon fan. Yeah. That's all it is. You always know where you are at when you at some sort of industry stuff too, man. Because when you have something that people need or want, you know, it's like that's when the temperament changes. Like, oh hey, what's up, man? You you know what I'm saying? What's going on? Yeah, you know, they, they know your name. Yeah, they know your name. You know, and for the most part, the advice that people were giving to young artists like trying to come up was like, yo, you know, if you get big. We'll come, we'll find you, mm. you know? And so, you know, that was interesting too, man. But it's always interesting to see, like, the 49-year-old rapper who um, still want to give you his cassette tape. Uh, I really don't know what to do for you. 52 Savage. Shit, um, 49 and a half Savage. I, I really don't know what to do. Like, when you give me a cassette, no, I, I'm honest. Like, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah, what am I supposed to do with it's this? It's a cassette, right. It's a cassette, brother. I don't I don't know what to do with this. Like, where am I playing this at? Like, Help me. I don't have a boom box. Nah, nah. Um, one of the rules someone said, DJ said that they do not like, and maybe you can um add on to this or say if this is right or wrong. A lot of them, everybody agreed that they do not like when someone walks up to them in the booth while they're mixing. I thought that was common sense. That happens often. It's it kind of irritating, but I mean, it's going. That's just kind of something that we're just used to. It's just going to happen regardless. Nobody really likes it to just. When you're mixing and you're trying to be in your zone and everybody wanna start tapping you on your shoulder, hey, hey and then they wanna have a full fledged conversation with you, like <laughs> like bruh. Like, like what do you do with that? Like what do you do with that? I mean, you, you just be nice. I mean, you say, All right, I got I got you, I got you. You just turn into a bobblehead and give him the yes, 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 yes till he till he's satisfied and goes on his way so you can get back to what you're doing. Like, you know I gotta play another song in another thirty seconds, right? All right, so all right, I got you. I got you. But what yeah, about yeah, like you. new music? Like an artist come up to you and they want you. They think they they saying they're the hottest person. Should they want you to play their song? How do you go about that process? Mm-hmm. While you're mixing, do you take? Do you actually take their record at that moment? Or no, you're like, I'm not no. doing that right now. Give, you can give it to me on a flash drive or something. And I'll listen to it tonight, but I'm not doing that right now. Okay. Uh, if you're the hottest person in the street, I know it because you're the hottest person in the street. That's a self-explanatory thing. Something you don't have to say is something that's, that goes without saying. It's right. understood. Don't need to be MC, said. MC, hottest person in the streets. Yeah, yeah, if you were the hottest person in the street, I'd know it. So, I mean, yeah, but you can give it to me, yeah, and I, I'll check it out later, but I'm not going. And it always happens at the hypest part of the party. They don't come in the early part, like when nobody really? went. They don't come in the early part, early part. Because that's when you could probably actually take a chance and actually play it early when it's not packed and go, people going crazy. But I'm not playing it in the hype part of the party. A record that don't nobody in the world know. Well, have you ever had like a real rude experience in your years of DJing? Like somebody coming to you, like oh, I had to just lean on somebody. Yeah, that stick out. What happened? Uh, I can't remember in particular, but I think he was just being real forceful, and I just had to like, yo, <laughs> like for real, like you talking to me, and you trying to be forceful with this, and I'm now I don't want to talk to, I don't want to see your music at all. Just, just now you got to go, and I basically told him like get the. Get away from me, yo, before I slap out you. Because it, it's, it's about it's, to go to that point. I think it's fair to mention that DJs are kind of like also like one step away from used to have done security anyway. I used to done security, but I mean, it's just people, they, I don't know, they may just get it twisted because of the DJ. But I mean, hey, bruh, like, I will slap the shit out you if you don't get the hell out my face right now. now. I, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like this. All right, bruh, like, I, I t- now. No, nah, no, nah, you just did to me. Now get out of here. I got a homeboy um, who I'm not gonna put his name out there. He's a DJ, and he told me how a client flew him out, right? Mm-hmm. And when he get there, um, he pretty much did not use his hard drive. The dude just wanted him to play his nephew's music throughout the whole party. He said, and you can definitely tell like the people wasn't feeling it. Uh-huh. But the person that was writing it, that wrote the check, was oh, like, "Oh yeah, you wrote the check. I mean, it's your party. Like, I mean, what, what I mean, he said, but he had to play his nephew's music the whole night. The nothing whole but his night, nephew's nothing music. but his nephew music. That nothing. check was good. He said, that's it. <laughs> he like, he was like, he was like, it was the easiest part he ever had to do because it was just a straight playlist, and he was just playing his nephew's music. And he said, the dude just kept being like, only people that was really enjoying it was the nephew and his family and the uncle, right, and his family. <laughs> that was it. That was it." And he was like, that's all he did all day long. So no, I mean, that's a private party. That's not like you in the biggest club in the city and everybody's going crazy. It's the power hour. And Damn, I won't put him out there because I was about to say he kind of was at like a, a nice known spot in a certain city. Oh, okay. Well, but and, the dude had bread. 
locked it down. So he bought out the club, though. But yeah. that's different. It's his event, though. He, that's what he told me. He was like... It's his event, but though. But he wasn't expect. He was like, he just wasn't expecting that because, you know, he wanted to do this spot. Yeah. He was like, oh, man, that's dope. I heard that spot, you know, flew him out there and everything. And he was like, um, okay. I mean, as terrible as it, ha- as it was, but I mean... He the that artist and that guy had the I mean they had the rank to do that because they bought out the spot yeah and they threw their own party and brought people into it. I mean, How much of a narcissist I mean, it's, it's you have idi- to be? Yeah, it's definitely idiotic to like. But how much Jay-Z of a narcissist you have do to do that and listen like, to his own music You have all to night, be like, where you're like, I want to hear me all day. Like that's what I want to hear, well, and I'm I mean, even going to invite my friends to hear me. He's trying to shove it down down their throat that he's the hottest thing in the world, but I mean, Jay-Z wouldn't even do that. Like even if Jay-Z threw a party, you're going to hear other music play besides Jay-Z. So I mean, but you playing your nephew? <laughs> I mean, he was, that's that's like, how hard he was trying to please passionate I, about his project. I mean, hey. I it was bas- it was basically a listening party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you think about it, it yeah. was basically just a listening event. That's what yeah. he held. He held in a listening event. Well, and that he nephew flew him out to do that and that nephew fell off before he fell on because that was like five years ago, and we ain't heard from that dude since. Oh, uh, well, so. we didn't hear from him that night either because apparently people probably left. Yeah, yeah. I, well, according to my man, they got empty up in there, but it is what it is. So you know, I don't know, bro. So you know, let's let's. Yeah, I wouldn't have said my name at all on that mic. <laughs> no, I, I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna put him out there like that. Not, I'm talking about on the mic at the party. I'd have just, oh, <laughs> you just would have played the music. I you would have played a drop or nothing. Just nah, no drop. To the sounds of nobody, nobody, <laughs> nobody. DJ, no, <laughs> nobody. DJ, such and such. No one. The girl, the DJ is no one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I got you. All right, well, let's let's let's, let's get to stuff, man. First thing, um, you know, I want I wanted to rap about too, I, and I I gotta say too, I, I could not wait for this show. Because there was so much that kind of happened this week, so you know, let's let's start off with some with something real smooth. Like, uh, you got Future, kind of like, you know, been doing a lot of press lately, um, because he has an album coming out. We'll get to that later, but he's well, it's been, out. It's out. The Wizard, right? And Wizard's he's been out. he's been doing a lot of press lately. Uh huh. And um, you asked. know, this is the most I've ever seen Future talk because Future don't really talk like that. Like even when he do interviews, his interviews are kind of like just kind of um, kind of stale. Because yeah, he doesn't it, reveal that much. It's just basic. He sticks to the music. Right. But he does have, like, these moments where he'll say that it's like a one bar. When he pissed off. Right. I, and I don't know if it's because he's been doing all these interviews in one day and that mm-hmm. one person just happened to get him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know what it is. But this one that has stood out that kind of had people um, kind of going was, well, it was, it was a couple. But the first one. <laughs> <laughs> that I noticed was the one he said about um, Sierra. Sierra Russell. Right. He said, um, quote, he do exactly what she tell him to do. He not being a man in that position. You not telling her, bro, chill out on that internet. Don't even talk to him. I'm your husband. You better not even bring up Future's name, unquote. I'm like, yo, that's kind of like. Well, that was different. I heard the other quote when they was talking about, um, she wants him to meet him now. He's like, I don't want to meet him now. The damage has been done. I should have met him a while ago. Y'all already then. Wait, wait, wait. Sierra was saying that she wants those those two to meet now. Something like that. I think he was asked. Uh, Sierra would want it, or it, somehow it came up that Sierra wanted him, so it was time for him to meet Russell. Okay. So Future was like, Fuck no, I don't want to meet him now. Like, what's the point of meeting him now? The damage has been done. Y'all married now. I'm supposed to meet him before all that goes down. And you, before I mean, you think Russell about you going to get serious, I'm supposed to meet him before he meets my son. Russell was pushing the cart, like, within, yeah, like, three weeks a day. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, he was at a, he was holding his son at a training he camp. He was, he was, he was throwing him up in the air. <laughs> at a training camp. So he's like, the damage has been done. So, like, nah, I don't want to meet him now. <laughs> I mean, what she probably has his own feelings and I mean I would probably feel a certain way too so I mean who knows I mean if he meet him now it might just be a problem on site you never know but that's throwing somebody in a, in a situation that they can they kind of feel like their back is against the wall and certain emotions may transpire and somebody might get the five fingers to the face so I mean yeah it's possible I mean is, is there something to that of you being the father is there something Cause you know, I, remember, I mean, he's absolutely right. He's I remember, absolutely I remember right. a few years ago when that first happened. There was a huge online debate, and you had all these people that were speaking. Cause you know, the the perception was that Future cheated, whatever. And I don't really like getting into the relationship bag. Yeah, but whatever. Was, that that has it, nothing it, to do it, with it, the no, way a, the co parenting thing is set up. And people were using that like as a plight of like she found a great guy and she should do what she want. But I always feel like people were missing the fact that at the end of the day, he's still a father. If that happened, where you had a guy you were dating for a short period of time. At that point, it was like short. 
and he's bouncing my son up in the air, and I haven't met him yet. I don't know nothing that's going on. I kind of understood it. I don't think just because he got I definitely about, understand it. He's, yeah. he's, he's completely in the right on this one. I mean, and at that moment now. So do you think it? fast forward to the present, you think he has a point about what he just said, about he's not being a man, she should keep her. He, he, her, her, Sierra should keep his name out the mouth or whatever the case may be. You think? I mean, a, that's, that's just him commenting on on their relationship, which is that that can go either way. That's different. I was talking about just the quote that I heard. I didn't hear about the one you were talking about, but I mean, I don't think. I mean, I mean, we all know Russell's a, a mild mannered person. He's not that type of. He's not that type of guy. So I mean, he's gonna let Sierra be Sierra, and I mean, of course, that's just not that's not future. Because I mean, he wants to be he has the pride and the bravado, but yeah, I think it's yeah, I think it's a more of a bravado that we're kind of like used to hearing mm. of that. You know, I'm the man, you the woman, be quiet. You know, saying kind of stuff, or don't mention another man in my presence at yeah, all. Yeah, but at the end of the day, that's her. That, that is her child's father, so she is. I mean, she definitely should be free to speak on she them. Can, I mean, yeah. I mean, because they have issues. They have a living son. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's, so, that's that's material. So, she would have to bring him up. It's not like she can't. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. That's just it's twisted a, off in Future's mind, though, the way things are supposed to go. Yeah. But in his mind, in his and mind. I, and like, I kind of get the whole, like, when, you know, that's also that school of, like, when your woman is acting up or whatever, you want to check the man because you don't want to go back and forth with the woman. Correct. So you look at it. It's, it's like it's like when you getting cussed out by a girl and her man right there, and you kind of like, hey, bro, you you gonna step in a little bit? Like, what you you know what I mean? Because if I go back and forth with her, I don't know where this can go. So I, you know, I, I get it from that angle, but you know, I don't know. He also, you know, like you said, his album dropped, The Wizard, and he also said that he was scared to tell people that he had been off lean. because he didn't want people to be looking at his music had you know changed or whatever the case may be. And it brought up a question of, like, do you think Future, who has birthed a lot of these artists in the sense of, like, a lot of these artists, the way they use their music and their tones, they're kind of like his baby. Oh, yeah. Do you think, though, he's getting appreciated at or his music is falling off or is it, or are we, we just want to hit a pill popping Future or there's a chance that his music might have fell off? Or? I mean, no, uh, Beast Mode 2 was, was hot. And, I mean, the record he got out now is decent, too. So, I mean, he's, he's always been consistent and he's still going, I don't think Future's going to go nowhere. Do you think he missed a, a opportunity to be that person to say, I'm no longer on drugs, and he could have really had, like, an impact to kind of say that? Because you think about the things that no, we do I now. Think, I don't think he missed nothing with that. You don't part. think so? Uh, I don't think he's Future not, not being on drugs, you don't think so, with his audience? You, you think they'll accept that? I mean, they'll accept it, but, I mean, I don't think he missed a wave or anything. He ain't missed no money. Well, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about missed opportunity to kind of, like, have a – a cultural impact to be like, yo, I'm not doing drugs no more. Yeah, right? Future's a hustler. He don't care about that. Yeah. If we're looking for a woke future, I don't, I don't think. Yeah, you he, know, he's yeah. just a hustler. He, he worried about financial. And, yeah, he ain't worried about that. He don't care. Yeah, that's real. But sometimes I think that the oversaturation of music might have been, I think he was like his own enemy because his music was like always there and people couldn't tell the difference between the music they was going to buy or the music they was going to get for free. Mm -hmm. And I always felt like that kind of like damaged him a little bit because when your music is kind of like always there, people can kind of take it for granted. They can take it, they'll, they'll feel like they'll get to it soon and then they never get back to it. It's right. like certain shows on Netflix I, I haven't watched yet because I'm always like, it's there. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel the urgency to, like, go watch it because Netflix is not going to take it away. So that's why I'm wondering, like, with Future in his career, like, even right now with The Wizard, like, with the song being out, do you think it's causing, like, a ruckus or an impact? Because it, it, to me, it seems kind of quiet in comparison to what we know Future to have dropped. I mean, that's everything, though. Everything is quiet, a little quieter, and it, and it dissolves a little quicker just because of the way the music industry now, the way, way we stream and the way we consume music and the quick, well, I say not the quick, but the short um, short memory we have or short attention span we have with music, period. So so it kind of it kind of goes into play with Future. Well, at least how he was, because he used to just put out music every, put out a mixtape or uh, some EP or something every month. So it kind of played into that because he was always in the new. He just kind of slowed down and hadn't really put nothing out over the past three, four months. So so musically, is he washed? No, definitely not washed. You don't think there's a chance that he's washed? Nah. You don't nah. think these other little homies that then took his style and ran with it, people paying more attention to him? Nah, he's still out here. Because I think Future's at that strange point in his career, and this is me just honestly speaking, where like he's older, but his audience hasn't grown. And so he's still got to do and perform in, a, in an old way. 
I mean, in a young way. And I think that's almost damaging for him because there's nothing we're going to get from him that's going to be, like, shocking for us. It's going to be the same pill-popping, syrup-drinking type music, and there's no necessarily no growth. And the young audience that he's catering to, they can just go to anybody else for that. Mm. So, I think so. Yeah, they can just go to anybody. All these other younger kids are doing it pretty much what Future has been doing. It's unfair, but they're doing it. And so, like, why go to him? And he hasn't had a growing... Like, there's nothing Future has put out that has showed, like, growth. It's always been the, kind of like the same thing. And you think he's falling down a Jeezy slope? Yeah, honestly. I think you can. But I never thought, I never looked at Jeezy as, like, a falling off a slope anyway. Because Jeezy was always trying to grow in that sense, like, with his music. Like, you know, talking about the recession and, you know, trying to talk about, get, Jeezy was all about his, I mean, motivation. He was always about trying to get it and which, what can you do with it. I'm, I'm just talking about from his music becoming unimpactful and music not being as relevant and and, and is in keeping the impact in the basically yeah i mean but as as far as on a put you like this jeezy has an audience ti now they have audience because they've been around for a very long time but their audience has especially like ti's audience for example his audience has grown with him future's like, been around for a while now future's been around for a while but he, he hasn't got at put least out eight nine years eight but in, eight in, his eight, nine music years is still eight, nine years ago. Like, it hasn't grown is what I'm saying. Like, for example, when you listen to the last Jeezy record, you listen to the last T.I. record, there's growth in there. Like, definitely that last Tip album was, like, Seasons was growth. Like, that was strictly for adults. Like, you literally got to have at least one kid or you came close to having one kid listen to that album or one homeboy who died, <laughs> right? So that's what I'm saying as far as in T.I.'s music, it had growth and his audience has grown with him versus future music, it still sounds... There's nothing when you listen to future music now that is different from when he came out eight years ago. His music hasn't grown. That's all I'm saying. So that's why I'm I'm like, he's at that weird place where he's still catering to like a young audience, but there's other young dudes that are doing the same thing. So that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it leaves me for a fact, like, unless you was a strong future supporter, it's kind of like, oh, future album drop. Oh, okay. But I'm not going to listen to oh, it to okay. hear nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going oh, to. Oh, man, it's still future, man. It is. It is. And I'll get to it. I think he's a dope artist, but it's not nothing I'm going to go to to be like, it's the same thing. Like, literally, I, I think that's how Wayne's, I think that's how the Carter kind of star a little bit because the Carter was a dope album, but Wayne has to find that place or that where he's going to make that transition between him just always saying, like, how much of a dope artist he is. I mean, how good he can rap. Like, we know Wayne can rap. We know Wayne can spit. But when is he going to get in depth and be vulnerable and reveal himself and show some growth and things of that nature where we can be like, oh, man, like, this album is, like, you know, that 444, like, this is your album where you definitely have shown some growth. You want to cry on the record? I mean, I ain't, ain't got to cry. He ain't got to cry. Is his mom <laughs> cried on the last record? That was good enough for me, you know what I'm saying? But it just just show some growth in that. I, I'm just saying Future's kind of like at that weird place. Um, and you can definitely tell that he's not one for, like, kind of, to your point, like he's definitely not somebody who cares about the woke crowd. Mm -hmm. Because what he said, did you catch what he said about R. Kelly? No, I didn't catch that part. When they asked him, of course, you know, the surviving R. Kelly situation, if you're an artist and you come through the media circuit, they're going to ask you about it. It's just what it is. And when they asked him about it, he pretty much was saying, you know, quote, we giving it too much attention. When you give things too much attention, they blow up, unquote. That's what he think about the R. Kelly situation. You think there's some truth to that or he's out of his mind? When you give things too much attention, they blow up. But. You think he? You think that applies to the R. Kelly? I think he was he was trying to make a point, but the way he processed it in his brain, the thought sounded good, but when it came out his mouth, the delivery wasn't what he thought it was going to be. <laughs> so what you think he was trying? Somewhere to Somewhere from the brain to the mouth, it got the message got misconstrued. Like when you tell somebody one thing and then you tell another person and another tell person. The message is totally different by the time right, you got right, to the third right. person. It was like that's, telephone. Yeah, that's that's, that's, how, that's, what, that's what happened from like his Like you saw what I'm saying, the chicken got it, went across the road. And by the time it got to John, John was like, yeah, the chicken shot up three dudes <laughs> and ate a turkey and jumped off the Empire State Building. Like, yeah. Yeah, so I think that's what happened from his brain to his mouth with that one, to be honest. Yeah, I can't say we paid too much attention. I think that's the whole point of the doc is that right. people wasn't paying attention to Kells. If anything, I think we paying it too much attention too late. Yeah. Rather than <laughs> rather than backing down and jamming on it, but he was 
this guy was bulletproof back then. So. Yeah, I mean, people he, were making noise when I was paying attention. Yeah, right? he, he, was, he was bulletproof. Like, every too many people was making money off of him, and they wouldn't let nobody come in between it. So I, I also got to kind of, like, get at media personalities for asking someone, like, a future about stuff like that. Like, if an artist themselves never gave you the impression that they had that type of um, – bandwidth in their brain why why are you asking them in-depth questions like that like are you just looking for a sound bite like of like course. we said like we know future like why are you asking him something like that and even going on about that like you he's not gonna go into depth with anything like that like future gives you all the impression that he's all about himself when it comes to the bread it's all about that money yeah so, he don't want none of that in his in his area in his existence like just don't even bring it up he's not worried about that yeah um so um French Montana said the same thing. Like, he just want to let legends live. Like, bruh, stop asking people like that. Like, French don't get... French looks like he just want to live his life, puts out a record when he wants to put out a record, and he just want to be glossy. French yeah. just not, is not someone you go and... Again, these are not people you go and ask. Like, I don't understand. It's kind of like that old joke that Dave Chappelle had. We said when 9-11 happened, he said the news is like, let's hear what Ja Rule got to say. Like, like I don't want to hear from Ja Rule, nigga. Like, <laughs> like, 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 that's not who I want to hear it's from. It's not the you personal just, credibility that right? I want to hear from right now. Like, the buildings just blow up, and let's, let's hear what Ja Rule has to say. Like, that's not what I want to hear. Like, I think we have to kind of know our artists and know the people that are in the culture. Like, unless they give us something that shows that they can kind of articulate uh, that. Unless you're going to talk to a J. Cole or a Common or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like... like those are the people I might want to hear. I might want to hear what Common got to say. I might want to hear what, I mean, if this was five, six years ago, I may want to hear what Kanye West got to say. Uh, yeah, but, he, <laughs> over, even now, you probably want to hear what he had to say because he's going to give you something. Yeah, he's going to give me something. But uh, you going to ask Future about the government shutdown? No. Like, <laughs> like, not asking him about that. Like, you going to ask Rich about Montana it. about the government shutdown? Like, you going to ask him about that? Yo, man, how you feel about the government shutdown? Uh, do, do, do they know? <laughs> Does he know? I mean, you know what I'm saying? When you high like that and living your life like oh, that, oh, that every mean I ain't got to pay taxes this year? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they looking at it. Huh? What? I mean, like, I ain't got to pay my taxes, huh? Like, who, who you going to, like, what's what's up with this? Like, we just, every time there's like a major situation. Does that mean the feds can't indict me now? Right. That's it, right. So that means the feds ain't working? Feds ain't working? State, local, they don't know the don't difference between all that. So <laughs> I can smoke weed now? So they let my all my people out the, out the federal penitentiaries so now? So my man out? Yeah. Oh, they still locked up. They accept Cash App. Like, they still lock. Oh, we still locked up. Right. Oh, okay. I don't know none of that, man. So I, I think you know, to people who ask them kind of those kind of questions. I mean, I understand asking about you know the surviving R. Kelly situation because that was such a huge topic. But you can't. When people get upset, when I saw the outrage of people upset at Future about that, I'm like, it, it's Future. You ought to be happy. That's all he said. Like, what did you expect from? Him? What did you really? What more do you want from me? Right. I mean, come on, now. let's let's keep the focus on R. Kelly. Let's not start saying we gonna mute future because I mean, future, you shouldn't you shouldn't expect nothing less from him anyway. Um, personally, speaking of R. Kelly, did you hear about Sony? Yeah, they released he was, him. He was dropped. He was definitely dropped. They they're feeling the pressure of the. Um, oh yeah, they was feeling that big pressure. Oh my god, they was feeling that 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 white person. Caught a black guy kicking a dog pressure. They, they, they was feeling that. What? They was kidding. They got what, that. Wait, wait, they got what? that. They got that Michael Vick dog fighting pressure. That Peter dog fight. That Peter pressure. Like that glad pressure. That they got the pressure pressure. What? 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 I mean, it's, it's definitely no question that they're late, right? Oh yeah, they're, they're late. late. Yeah. So my thing is, what do you think the difference between the people who were, because you, you know, you and I last week, we had a good conversation with a good friend who was telling us about how people were protesting back then, right? Mm -hmm. And talking about boycotting chaos back then. What do you think is the difference now in the sense of why a label would feel that sort of heat um, to be like, oh, okay, well, we're going to release him? I mean, he's not generating the amount of money that he, nowhere near the amount of money he was generating then. But he's still generating money through streams of his catalog. But yeah, I mean, and at the end of the day, they still own. They still probably own some of his publishing, uh, own some of his masters. So they still going to eat, even though they dropped them. Yeah. So that's just the dropping is just to save face. But they still eating off R. Kelly. I think, somebody got to get paid off them streams. I think that's an example of how social media can be used for a good thing. Because oftentimes we always think about social media when we use it as a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the time because social media, you're seeing the. You can definitely apply pressure. Right. And you're seeing the result of something like right then and there. Like if you put a song out, you don't have to. You, you're seeing that people like it right then and there for the most part. And when people really organize and put their energy towards something that 
they really got their eyes set on something, you're going to feel that pressure. Like you can't, like where in the 90s, a label wouldn't, unless you standing out front of their building, which to my understanding, there was a protest of people standing in front of the Sony building, I think earlier this week. So not only were you feeling the pressure on social media, but you had people in front face. of your building. They were in your face. So, you know, there's something to be said about that. I'm sure on both they ends. had something going on outside of Jive back in the day, but when you generate millions upon millions upon millions, I yeah. mean, nobody cares. We have uh, to find. They'll get a, tired of walking around in a circle eventually. Just, just, just let leave, them eat just, cake. Just, is how they feel, just, right? Just leave them be. Leave them be. Yeah. They'll get tired of walking around in a circle. You remember the around. Occupy Wall Street thing, and yeah. the people were protesting outside of Wall Street, and the people that were inside, like the stockbrokers and all them, they started drinking champagne <laughs> in front of the people who were protesting, like drinking champagne, like yeah, y'all be all right, y'all in the rain. <laughs> it's like that's. I think that's how that situation kind of uh, faked out to be. So, you know, that's you know. With the Kale situation, you think that this is over? Like, you think that uh, getting him off the label, that this over, or is it going to be more repercussion? I mean, it's going to be more repercussion. I think the next step is probably going to be taking his taking all his music off of the... They're going to push... They're going to put the pressure on iTunes, SoundCloud, and all the streaming services to get his music off of there. That'll probably be the next thing they push, if they push anything, because that's the... That's the bread. That's the money. So here's the question, though. Are we not coming out with an album? But right is now. that a slippery slope? Because are we if we if we take Kells, for example, and we take him off the Spotify's and we Crucified. take him off. And are we going to start looking at other artists in the same way? Like, are we going to like is Michael Jackson Thriller coming down? Well, like, you gotta, is, I guess you got to call Lifetime. <laughs> what you mean? I guess you got to call Lifetime. Are you talking about the actual channel? Yeah. No, I'm just saying, what's the next step? Like, are we going to start taking... That's what I'm saying. You're going to have to call Lifetime. What? Well, I'm, Lifetime I'm, is the one that did the Surviving All Kelly. Well, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So get them to do another one and get another outrage, and then you know, the ball will start rolling. Well, I'm just That's saying... That's the formula now. Is that going to be a problem? Because I I, I can't think of not playing Thriller. Let's occupy... <laughs> <laughs> well, for one... Michael, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, yeah, Michael's situation know. was different. Michael's situation this is what was I'm different. Saying. I don't believe... I, and, I believe Mike was set up for the bread, so that's just me personally. Yeah, but um, yeah, I don't know. And and R. Kelly was out there. We all knew it every every step of the way. So I just hope it sticks with people like like the way you said. Like if they go uh, out to Mike, they better go out to Elvis. And see, here's the thing: like, or, or are we are we not going to watch? It's like when those channels took off on uh, Cosby Show. I didn't like that because number one, I felt like the show had other people on there. Correct. You understand? And I felt like the show he was acting. So it's not like the show. I think Kale's situation is so is different because Kale's actually was telling us in his music what he was about. So I'm always going to make, to me, that's always going to take away from everything else. Like the Cosby show itself, you know, Cliff Huskable isn't um, on there like jogging nobody. I mean, even as a doctor, you barely even seen him at the office. I don't even know if you saw him at work on the show. I got to go back and watch an episode or two. It's a but, couple episodes when I'm at work. Yeah, we had the coat on, but he's not drugging nobody. Or Versus Kales is calling himself the Piper. and Everything you go back and you listen to, you kind of get the feeling that he was talking about a young teenage girl. <laughs> and you definitely going to think about it now because the older to get, the more he looks like he's a pedophile, right? <laughs> Allegedly. Um, I mean, you can sue I ain't got no money. But my point is, is that, you know, I just hope it sticks with people that are like that. I hope we don't get to the point of a slope when we start saying like, well, this person's talking about this in their music and, you know, we take them off, like off the possibility, you know, like a minority report, you know, like when you start punishing people for the crimes that they said they, they're thinking about committing. Mm. I hope it doesn't get to that point when I'm saying with music, I hope we stick with the Kales and them of that type of, um, those type of folk, uh, you know. Right, but point. if they go after all these people, go after, go after the drunk, the uncle in your family. Go after the cousin. Go after the guys in the neighborhood. Go get get all them off the street, too. I do think it's, it's, it speaks to a bigger issue, like you said. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, get your uncle. Yeah, that's you. I'm talking about your brother. Yeah, I'm talking about them. I mean, it could be your sister or whoever it is. I mean, they need to go, too. Yeah. Those yeah. dirty, those uncles that we just said, you just know your uncle just fresh like that? Nah, we need to start checking yeah, them. Yeah, we had the same thing going on with um, Nicki Minaj's brother. Yeah. Shh, that's heavy. Yeah. That is real. That is real. And for our understanding, you know, that was, I can't he's imagine. In, he's in jail, jail. Right I now. can't imagine being in Nikki's shoes because it's like, that's still your brother. Um, but you're paying his lawyer fee. But, you know, for the situation that he did, it's like, uh, I can't imagine being in that situation. But you're right. We got to start holding people like that accountable and getting them help for that. You know what I mean? Or getting them tortured if they don't get help. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. So, yeah, let's, let's, let's get to some um, more stuff.
that, you know, had came out. Now, I don't know if you was up on this. A, a couple weeks ago, it was announced that Travis Scott was going to perform at the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And then this earlier this week, it was a little bit of, of kind of uh, some wishy-washy stuff because some reports was coming out that him and Colin Kaepernick had talked. And even though they didn't allegedly agree with one another, they had a mutual understanding. And then there were some people like Ebru who had came out and said that that was lies. And then you had Nessa, who is Colin Kaepernick's girl, who retweeted that, was like, yeah, that was some straight-up lies. That was some BS. They never talked, none of that. And I think even Colin Kaepernick had retweeted that. Mm-hmm. Um, so pretty much it was a whole lie. And so my thing is with they Travis Scott. It. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like with the Travis Scott situation. And you also saw the report that he made an agreement you know, with the NFL. His girlfriend is on New York radio? Oof. They, yeah, and they also made a report that, that came out that said that the NFL was going to donate $500,000 yeah, or I something saw like that. that. And reported the NFL was donating yeah, 500 and, grand and, to and a charity, it seems, which is pennies on a dollar. But it seems like the Travis Scott camp, they just run around trying to give – they're just throwing stuff out, just trying to make people forgive them. Instead of just, I would have preferred it. You just been Look, on somebody. Like, I'm about to get this check. I'm about to do it. <laughs> I'm doing it. Be future. I don't give a damn. God bless all the trap niggas. I'm out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. And this is who also, I am. Also, Big Boy from Outcast is jumping on that with him, too, though. And I'm about to get on that because you had people that were calling him a sellout. And my thing is, do we know, well, to separate it, again, Travis Scott, to me, has never gave me the impression that he's like down for the cause or he's in the woke life or circle or whatever the case may be with a Kardashian. So why are we investing as much in him to think that he's going to like not perform at the Super Bowl? And I think the problem with the Super Bowl situation is everybody's out on one accord with it. Um, everyone's not saying, okay, we're not watching. Are we not watching Super Bowl because, I mean, are we not watching NFL because we want Colin Kaepernick to get a job or we want some things that we want to change up me. I'm on record saying, I'm not necessarily protesting. I just lost interest mm-hmm. over time. You know, I just ain't. I, the Colin Kaepernick situation kind of, to me, was kind of one of those last things they kind of did that just kind of made me be like, uh, I'm just not really into this right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just on how the structure of the NFL is set up and how you got players who didn't beat their wives and domestic and how they treated those situations. I wasn't a fan necessarily of that. I can't necessarily say when it came to Colin, you know, there was a lot of things that he was saying in the beginning I wasn't really with. Um, but that's why he stopped talking, I believe, too, because I think he kind of got ahead of himself. So mm-hmm. now he just want to stick with the issues at hand. But to call someone like Travis Scott, when you're a sellout, the definition of sellout is like when you have claimed that you stand on some sort of moral compass compass or um, stage. And then the check coming, you out of there. And then the check coming, you out of there, right? So what has, where's the contradiction with Travis Scott? Where, he did, where did he tell us that he was standing on some sort of, platform when it comes to on the side of the fence with the NFL. I mean, he's having a great year this year. Oh, yeah, he's having a crazy year. So, did he give us any impression? Like, is that selling out technically for him? No. I mean, he, he's never definitely gave us the impression that he was down for the cause or he was ever trying to be woke or ever cared about being woke. I mean, Travis was kind of like your Oreo, but not, and then he just flopped back and forth. Like, he rode that that fine line. Damn, you said Oreo. I ain't heard that term since the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's true. I mean, my lines. Uh, I hear you. Oh, all right. Now, I mean, but, I hear where you coming from. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so that's, I don't. He definitely had like a white, like audience loving him. He definitely had black people loving him. He definitely had, I don't lane. call them weird, but what people will say, like the weird audience loving him. He definitely had that space. Because, you know, we was up on Travis early mm-hmm. when we used to record this show, like in the basement. Mm-hmm. And even then, I think I went to, or a friend of ours went to a show. I didn't go, but a friend of ours went to a show and told us, like, she was, like, the only black person in the audience. This was then when he was just coming up. Yeah. Yeah. So he definitely went that flow rider out. Just with more acid. Yeah, and they would definitely be, be the ones that's at the Super Bowl watching it. <laughs> yeah. So he, he, I mean, he's just supporting his audience. I mean, what if he comes out there well and ran a Colin Kaepernick jersey and throws his fists up? Do we forgive him? Probably. <laughs> If he brings Colin Kaepernick out, wow, mm. that's the only way he can rebound. And what, what like, Ka- don't 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 tell nobody. Just bring it. Just just pull him up out the floor. <laughs> just have him stand there. And just have him stand there with his fist up. Yep, that's real. 
That's real. That's real. <laughs> and put them on the last verse. Of, have them rap Drake's verse on sicko mode. <laughs> <laughs> She's in love with who I am. <laughs> what about um, Big Boy? Are we disappointed that Veteran doing that? Um, Tell the truth. Because it's Atlanta. I mean... I haven't heard from Big Boy. I don't know why. What's his reasons for it? Um, kind of, it did surprise me though. It definitely did surprise. It surprised me, me too. So, and now down here, Big Boy, I'm surprised to want to know if the political part of our cast, which is Andre 3000, will be making a surprise guest appearance on the halftime show with him as well, because Andre is the woke one. But see, I don't feel that way as a, as a heavy Outcast fan. They had parts with. Andre was Andre is Andre. Andre is better. But mm-hmm. as far as the wokeness of them, they both had parts where they both was going, you know, more well back then it was conscious, right? So yeah. they both had their conscious areas or whatever. Big boy wasn't no slump. It wasn't like he was the idiot in the room. No, I ain't saying he was an idiot, but I'm saying it's more political and open to You're openly. saying we we look more towards but why do we look towards more uh, towards Andre? Because what did Andre ever say to us? To make us look like okay, Andre is this messiah. As far I mean, as I can't, that. I can't tell you, I can't pull those rhymes off my head. But he has them. You just talk about it rhyme wise. You're not talking yeah, about like speaking off record. Speaking off okay, record. No, I'm no, sorry. I'm talking about rhyme wise and actually my fault, my fault. political and just just speaking woke. Like he told me, he said, um, on walking out freestyle. Do you remember this when he said, unless you give me something valuable, or talking about cars when cars were metal instead of plastic value is what I'm talking about. Take two of these and walk it out. I mean, he has a bunch of rhymes like that. I remember that was the song. All I remember about walking out was well, that was the song where he was dissing the guy who record it was. Yeah. He was like, your shirt too long. <laughs> That's yeah. like, you know. So but he go was ahead. always, he, he was, he was, he, he dropped, he's the one that dropped all the jewels. Like, um, Big I Boy I feel like was Big Boy dropped the, jewels too. I just feel like Andre he, just dropped them better. Yeah, Big Boy had the swag. Big Boy had the swag. Andre was, was he's definitely the stronger lyricist. We all know that. Right, right. Andre was definitely the stronger lyricist. So he, I, I feel like he got a lot of things off his mind that he wanted to say more better and more articulate than Big Boy did. I mean, he was better. I mean, not, we, not calling Big Boy a slouch because he's not. No but, disrespect. When, you, when no you're the fire. when you're the more gifted artist, you can you can articulate it better. Yeah, and that's that's what. But that I was. don't think that takes away the fact of one person having more depth than you, though. Like you might be more consciously. Well, maybe but I'm maybe able to Andre's depth just came out a lot better. Oh, and there's no question. Yeah, so that's well, that's what it so, is, but, and that's I, why we take it to him. I only lead back to say, one. but does that make Big Boy a sellout though? Do we look at Big Boy as a sellout? I don't know. I need to see this whole thing. I need to. See this whole thing come full circle. I need to hear some interviews. Somebody to ask some questions. See, I'm also one of those individuals that believe that you need people on the outside, you need people on the inside. Yeah, because Jermaine right? Dupree said if he got the call, he would have did it. I mean, again, that's someone else who I'm not expecting nothing, no less from that, right? Mm-hmm. And my thing is, what if Big Boy get up there and perform and throws his fist up and has a Colin Kaepernick jersey up there or something of that nature, right? Mm-hmm. Then we're going to be looking at him like, man, because that's a statement to be made in your face. Like, we here and we still here. Like, do... I, I believe that there's protests and there, there's different ways of, of expressing or um, raging against the machine. There's different ways. We all don't have to go about it in the same route. So I don't know, again, if I can call someone like Big Boy, who's been a vet in this game, doing what he's been doing for so long, like a sellout. Like I don't know if I could throw him in that category like that. Because like you said, are we forgetting the fact that the Super Bowl's in Atlanta? Like it's in Atlanta. And when yeah. you think about Atlanta... You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you're thinking about big boy. You think about outcasts. You are thinking about the pioneers of Atlanta. Yeah, and I mean, and it's certain one thing to be said too. I mean, we could be mad at them performing at halftime, but I mean, there's other rappers that still go to games. That's real. Yeah, I mean, that's real. Why y'all? Y- I, I didn't see nobody mad at Hove when Hove was down in the sidelines with the Rams. Yeah, and Hove definitely was chilling at the sidelines, and nobody said and, nothing about that. Me- that's a good. Point, son. Meek Mill was still in. He was still at the Eagles game. That's a good point, son. Yes, yeah, that's a good point. Kevin Hart still tried to get on stage and grab the trophy. That is a good point. <laughs> so you guys Just are mad. The Super Bowl trophy, so. so what is the difference between these dudes that are performing and I guess they do? You, do you get a check for performing at the Super Bowl? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, oh, now I've heard yeah. you don't. It's just a push. Oh yeah. Well, it, you definitely get you definitely are receiving a, a new stage. You definitely it is definitely a momentum situation that you're receiving, right? But you're mad at the person for performing, but you're not mad at these other people who are actually down there. They might have paid for a ticket or they might not pay for a ticket, but they definitely are at their games in attendance. And cause I ain't seen nobody call Hove a sellout. And that is so real. Because mm-hmm. Hove was definitely down at the Rams chilling on the field. And there's been other rappers chilling 
on the field. And yeah. I ain't hear y'all say nothing to YG, them about me to sell out. YG's all in the crowd. Chilling. Snoop's all in the crowd. Chilling. Snoop yeah. love football. You don't never see Snoop talking about he giving up football. Yeah. I mean, uh, we got, but also, I mean, and I always thought this was a political move too with Robert Kraft always being close with me, coming up, doing the photo ops with Meek Mill when he got out of jail. And he probably did put up some money, but that was just to help that political, politically that image. So what, I mean, you mean tell me you didn't believe Robert Kraft when he was on stage with Rick Ross years ago? No. After they won that one that third championship, you ain't believe Robert Kraft. You ain't think he was listening to Rick Ross? You ain't think so? No. Oh, okay. Let me go ahead. I don't believe. I don't believe. Let me go ahead. I don't believe it. Go but ahead. um, yeah, I think it was all. I think it was all about just image, just image, because the his, especially his franchise in general, has the biggest. I mean, they they wear the red hats, the MAGA hats, and so he had to clean it up and try to figure it out some way. So I think that's the healthy medium with him. So, but yeah, but that's it. So, are those individuals who actually attend the games are they sellouts too? Are we looking at should we? You know how we just said earlier that if you go get mad at R. Kelly, you should get mad at the Elvis this and this and this and this. Correct. Should we start looking at that type of situation? Like if you're going to get mad at Travis Scott and you're going to get mad at the big boys and them, should you start looking at everybody else that's supporting it? Is that I mean, fair? support is support. Support is support, right? Yeah, so if I'm support, if I'm on the sidelines, and you're definitely going to do a candy shot of me on the sidelines. That's me supporting you. And if you're going to preach to me the differences between those things, right, that I feel like you should be able to point out, you should be able to see the differences between everybody got their way of expression or protesting in that matter. Now, keep in mind, Big Boy can probably go up there and just do his performance and walk back out. But what if he does go up there and he makes a statement? What if he is wearing a shirt that means something? What if he does go up there and say something to Mike that means something? Then we're going to be on him for that. We're going to celebrate him for that. Because, again, you do need people that are actually in the room, in the system, fighting on the inside and fighting on the outside. Now, this is all speculation because they haven't performed yet. Because everything I say can go out the window if they just go up there, do what they do, and they walk out. But to the still to that, to your point, I can't judge them when you still got people who are, like, supporting the NFL on these other matters, chilling up in the um, booths. In the skybox. Right. <laughs> Chilling in the skybox. Me bobbing in the skybox. Damn near, <laughs> damn near in the huddle. <laughs> damn near in the huddle. On the, in the, call the, in the play, huddle. Call the plays on the sideline. Yeah. Like, might as well give him a book. <laughs> so, you know, I think sometimes with this outrage, sometimes you guys need to kind of look at the situation for what it is. But with Colin Kaepernick, sometimes I think his, his, his situation, his voice gets lost because he hasn't spoke and he hasn't really said anything in a minute. And all these other people are speaking for him. So the message, I think, gets tainted and it gets lost on what exactly is happening. Cause, it's misconstrued. Yeah, because he's not going to play no more. We we should probably come to terms with that. He's not going to play in the NFL no more. He's not. And we should come to terms with that. And we should – I'm not saying we should move on. I think it should show light on a bigger issue with the NFL and we should put our energy towards the things that the NFL has done that we're not fans of. But as far as us doing it because we feel like we're going to do this until Colin Kaepernick get a job again, I just don't think he's going to play again. Because once you file a lawsuit against them, you have all your you're, you're, and when they went and brought a quarterback who ain't played in like in seven years, and you got other people they taking off the people off the bench who been at home chilling, eating bonbons, um, Colin gonna be sitting at home, bro. Like, don't be looking forward to see Colin Kaepernick out there in the. Like, I just don't. I, I don't see it happening. Yeah, he, I mean, I hope so. If this coming next year, this summer right here, tell the story. If he don't get picked up this summer, it's a wrap. I, I think it's already a wrap, but maybe I think it's already a wrap. Yeah, I think it's already. I think a wrap. we got one more. We got one more summer before it's officially a wrap. I mean, we never the teams are never short of needing quarterbacks, even a backup. I mean, hell, my team can use a backup. I mm. mean, my quarterback don't ever come out, but we can use a backup. One summer, one more summer. Okay, one more summer. Okay. Well, you know, let's let's get into some sports though, man. How'd you feel about um, your Eagles losing? You feel I like felt, it's still a great year or what? I felt, I felt it was definitely a great year. I mean, for all we've overcome, all the injuries, all the craziness, I mean, it's going to be crazy to find out what we do with Nick. I mean, it's supposedly supposed what to What do um, y'all do with that? Well, the story is we're going to franchise him and trade him. Franchise tag it because he has a $20 million option. But news is we did pay him because, um, and we did write by him. He had a million-dollar bonus in his contract that if he paid – played 33% of the stand, snaps, and we made the playoffs, he got a million dollars. Because the last game of the season, 
he got injured with his ribs and he he didn't return back to the game. He missed that incentive by four plays. Really? Yes, he missed that incentive by four plays because he didn't come back into the game. This is why people play injured, yo. Yeah, so. Four plays, you could have had a million dollars. So, but here's the thing. The Eagles gave him that million dollars today. Oh, really? Yeah, they 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 gave him that million dollars today. I mean, as I mean, Super Bowl MVP, everything he's done, I mean, they just basically, they did right by him. They did right by him. So they gave him the million dollar incentive anyway. What do you do with a situation like that? Because we're definitely moving forward with Carson Wentz, not to cut you off. Your own, no, 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 you ain't coming because the owner said that Carson Wentz is going to be the starter, but you had two straight years in a row where he couldn't finish the season. Correct. I mean, and the most important skill set a player needs in playing the NFL is to be on the field. <laughs> yeah, correct. So he hasn't been on the field. I mean, is the that best avail- the best ability is availability? Yeah. So do you have to kind of keep start looking at that? Like, if he goes another year, and I'm not wishing this on him, but he doesn't finish another season. Oh my gosh! Do you have Here to start go. looking at that? Here we go. Of course you do. Of course you do. That'll be three years in a row, and yeah, that'll be three years in a row. But the good thing is, well, the it's a good and a bad thing if he does it this year coming in because this coming year is the last year of his rookie deal. So they can go back to the drawing board, or I'm sure go find good old St. Nick somewhere. So, hey, you know, remember me? Come on back. Just come on back. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, the story is we're going to um, pick up his option, have him, on, have him on the roster just for the summertime and um and trade him. The thing about trade, they talking about trading him um, to Jacksonville and getting Leonard Fournette, the running back from up there. Okay. And I uh, hear Miami's looking. Uh, it's a couple people looking for a quarterback. I mean, Jacksonville, Miami. I heard they were the front runners, and um, it was another. It was another team too. Um, can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, Jacksonville, Miami were the first front runners right now. It hasn't, but could it be that the Eagles could be that special? And this is me not even. I'm not saying like I I'm, do believe that's the thing. He's a system quarterback because he was great in the system before, and then when he left and went to the Rams, he was thinking about retiring because it was just so awful. And he came back, and all of a sudden, guess what? He was good in the system again, which I also think is with Brady, too. I think Brady's just a great system quarterback. He works good in that system. You put Brady in any other team, I don't think he's as good. And I think that's the same thing with Nick Foles. I think he's the Brady of that system. Do you think this might lead to other teams in the NFL start looking at the possibility of looking at the two-quarterback system? Of the fact, you know, I mean, the fact that it actually worked for the Eagles the first time winning the Super Bowl, and it no, almost the, worked for them again. No, the two quarterback system didn't work. I mean, we just happened to have a backup quarterback that came in. A two quarterback system is when both quarterbacks play every game, kind of like the running backs do. Like they, that. no, absolutely not. Why not? Absolutely not. It's just no, 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 no. And if you did do that, one quarterback would probably be a runner, and the other one would be a pocket passer because it would have to be two polar opposites to get two different. Things you can't do that with a court at the quarterback position. Running backs, you can do that because there's so many plays and they get hit on every play, so you kind of spell them and stuff like that. So you, it won't be a two two quarterback system, no. Okay. Yeah, we didn't have a two quarterback system. We just had a quarterback that got hurt and a quarterback that came in and played the rest of the well, season. No, I was just wondering, <laughs> is this a possibility? It was a one quarterback system. One quarterback played the whole game. No, I'm just wondering, is this something that can lead to that? Because you take, for example, with these with Carson Wentz, who gets hurt, who can't finish the season. Instead of you taking that risk, maybe you, that, maybe you go to like six games and you take Carson out and then you be like, all right, Nick, you ride out, and then somebody else copy that and duplicate that. That's what I'm saying. Nah, nah, that's not happening. Because quarterbacks are too expensive to do that, for one. So <laughs> 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 they're the highest paid players on the team. So you can't be spending $50 million a year on quarterbacks. Then you got the rest of your team as nobody. So that's that's impossible. So, um, yeah, that'll, that'll never happen. Okay. That'll never happen. Okay, so how you feeling about the playoffs now? Uh, I'm thinking Saints and um, Saints and Kansas City, New Orleans and Kansas City. Okay. Anybody but the Patriots. Kansas City got to win. Got right. to the win. conference um, playoffs are who right now? Sunday. As we speak, Patriots played um, Kansas City Chiefs and St. Louis plays L.A. Rams. So Patriots play. I said the, the St. Louis plays L.A. Rams. No, Patriots the L.A. Play the Rams Chiefs. play the New Orleans Saints. Right. I would like to hear, like I would like to see Drew Brees win one more. And it'd be good. I, I like think, Drew. And I think that's what's, that's what's going to happen. I like Drew. I think Drew's going to take this and ride off into the sunset. If you win this year, and you like he just turned 40 like a few weeks ago. Yeah, he's done. Yeah, if you win. That arm is giving out. That arm, he ain't got he ain't, he ain't had he's that arm. He's been gunning, though. Yeah, he's gunning 30, 40 yards and under. So that deep ball, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't what he used to No, be. he just pull it when he want to. That's all. <laughs> 
is pulling back. <laughs> See, this is kind of like a long stroke when you're with a woman. You know what yeah, I mean? You that, just, you, that, that, that deep ball, you he, know? Ain't, he ain't I'm going to say that, that for Saturday. He ain't leading <laughs> them on that deep ball like he used to. That, that arm is starting well, to Well, now he's just kind of picking them apart, though. Yeah, oh, he's definitely, the brain is still there. He's picking you apart. Yeah. Anything, anything less than 40 to 50 yards, oh, yeah, he's picking you apart. But I'm saying, oh, that deep ball is in 40, 50, 60 yard bombs. You sure that's not on him, or in fact, he doesn't trust his receivers? No, I'm saying the receiver is open. He's just, the ball isn't going out front. He's not leading them on that deep ball. It's kind of okay. like they're slowing down to slow up to the ball. Okay. On it. So it's not, it's, the, the arm ain't what it used to be. I mean, he's still accurate as hell. Yeah. He's still accurate as hell. He just ain't got the deep ball like he used to. So I would love for him to win one more. Yeah, I'd love a good for him guy. to win one. He, yeah, he can go ahead and win this one. Go on, get out of there. Yeah. Go on, get out of there. Yeah. yeah you, you got the bread. You think Brady going to play for a few more years still, regardless of what the situation going to be? Yeah, Brady's going to play a couple more years. Brady's, Brady, they're going to they gonna, they gonna protect Brady and keep Brady there. So, Brady sunshine. Is old sun, good old against, sunshine. He's definitely fighting against Father Time. Yeah, good old sunshine is going to be there for two more years. Um, now Until I somebody think, just, unless he gets hurt real bad. He gets a torn ACL or Achilles injury. He always one hit away. Or a shoulder or something like that. He gets a bad injury, he's done. You always want to hit away. He's not going to recover. He's not going to take a year recovery or something and then come back. He's he's once he gets hurt again, he's done. Yeah, as long as he can stay upright and healthy, he's good. Well, the NFL is about to come to a close right around the time where I like to say the NBA starts to wake up the most. But I do think that the NBA has been really had a good thing about getting our attention earlier. Yeah, Boogie's back because Boogie is back, and first play. he came out fourteen points. Yeah, he came out first play of the game, pick and roll, boom. Yeah. And so, you know, Draymond Green was like, it's about to be a problem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you think that the Warriors are still going to go straight there? Is it go, is, should it be an issue now that Boogie Cousins is in? Or or this is something that was just a spur. It's still going to take time for him to recover from the Achilles. Oh, the Warriors are definitely three-peating. I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, James Harden, yeah, he's doing what he's doing. And I mean, and then until the refs wake up. And start calling travel. I mean, <laughs> and stop calling that foul. I mean, he'll 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 continue to do what he's doing. But I'm sorry, it's just one man against against five. It's just yeah, it's, it's impossible. He, and, he's and just outgunned. I'm sorry. Chris Paul is another one who constantly gets hurt. Yeah, you know what I mean. Because even when Houston Rockets were doing good in the playoffs and almost defeated the Warriors last year, Chris Paul got hurt. So he's another one who has issues with staying on the court, you know, on the field, you know, for lack of a better term. So, now I hear you on that, man. Um, let's give a couple yeah, shout-outs. He would have to drop 60 every night. And that ain't going to happen in the playoffs. That's not going to happen. That's no, not especially gonna in the happen. West. That's not going to happen. Yeah, I, I just don't see that happening. Um, big ups to EPMD. This is not even a good transition. I'm just going to say it. Big ups to EPMD because they paid tribute to the late fight dog at um at a show not too long ago. You know, fight dog, try car quest. They played tribute to him, played some of his music, whatever. I think there's at the Apollo. So big ups to them. And big ups earlier this week. It was the twenty it would have been the twenty seventh birthday of Mac Miller. His B Day was this week. Mm. You know, Mac died from pretty much a drug overdose. Uh he was fine in his apartment. That was my guy, man. Musically, I thought he was I've been playing um his album, well the one song off the album that had dropped, um, the song called Hurt Feelings. I think it's just a dope album. And it's still hard for me to really believe that Mac is not here. Um, because you know Mac had that attitude. We really like Mac. Um, we really was rocking with Mac and all that good stuff. So you know, I, I really was messing with him on that. Um, but I say all that to say so we can actually get to the shits because we. Was, I can't believe we was about to get out of here without that. Your boy, Soldier Boy, tell him. Drake, <laughs> Drake, and then um, say after all this, his streams have actually jumped seventy eight percent. So. Shout out to Soldier Boy for being so, the master marketer and knowing what the hell he doing and laughs on all of us we, for laughing at him. Well, and he's laughing right to the back. I definitely, we definitely just, what, we ended the show last week with laughing at him when he was talking about Tiger, Tiger. Drake. But I told you he last him. week on this show that Soldier Boy was the guy I was going to be looking forward to for 2019. And you laughed at my face. I told you. And what happened later on? He went on a media tour. And boy, has he been conquering on his media <laughs> tour. He has definitely been getting it in. Because when you think about all the things that he's done, and it leads me to want to ask, when he talked about Drake as far as taking his style, being a God, 
and taking his style when Drake first came out with to tell me what's really going on. So, did it. I mean, is is it we're gonna have to start acknowledging that Soldier Boy might be approaching legendary status? I mean, he's done a lot. He did he was the first viral artist to go viral off really YouTube with the you and Annie. He produces all his music, which is very goes under the radar real. He, he produced for a lot of people. He's produced for Nicki Minaj upon others. Um and Soldier Soldier's a hustler, you know. He he's a master marketer, he knows what he's doing. Y'all can say what you want, laugh at him all you want, but he laughing to the bank and he ain't broke and he ain't going broke no time soon. I tell you that for sure. Bro, and shitted on me, bro, like I was nothing. And now I'm back with a vengeance, bro. I agree with that. You just didn't have the biggest comeback in 2018. In order to have the biggest comeback, you got to come back with a massive hit. Because you're a musical artist. Yo, Charlemagne. Tiger had a record. Tiger? <laughs> Tiger? <go>. Okay. Tiger? <laughs> This nigga sitting right here talk about Tiger. The nigga that lost his bitch to Travis Scott. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit. The nigga, the nigga that Travis Scott netted in the bitch and got her pregnant. Damn. Holy shit, Big Drake. Uh, that, 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 him? He had the biggest comeback? Shit. Because of what? He did a record with Nicki Minaj. Oh, my God. A joint with Offset. Taste. Taste. The joint with Offset. That. Nigga, you know how many songs I got with the Migos? Even after the You know how many videos I got with the Migos? You still cool with them? Maybe you and Tiger. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite, yo. Uh, that's, that's, that's one of my favorite. I'm sorry. Well, uh, 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 hold on, hold on. What was my Tiger? Y'all love the white people at Microsoft. Y'all love the white people at PS4. Embrace the black community. Yeah, academics. Black I can bring you on board and you can leave and have a DJ Academics game. You twitch your stream yeah, on all day playing Fortnite and shit. Hold on, but I'm support not, it's the black community. community it's not know. a scam. I I Every I game on here is licensed. It's 800 pre star games that are licensed. I sold a million dollars in one day. Nintendo approached me. Why would they approach Come you? Come on, academics. Why would they approach you? Because they're trying to see what the fuck going on. It's a young black kid just made a million dollars within 24 hours. You know and our games are on the We want in. Why you name it on the box? Yo, it's the first prototype is to give me cut me some slack like man, i'm a black entrepreneur i done made a, shop listen my me. nigga i done made a million dollars off this motherfucking console look check this out look. Yo, why you and you so right you right it's seven orders it says seven it says orders seven for, order, 12, for twenty thousand. hold on wait, let me show the camera i gotta show the camera. Go ahead. Hold on, hold on. i love Which it we why I love you it. Have so many businesses though right because yeah, i'm a fucking bona fide right. hustler i'm trying to be a billionaire <laughs> You had that many businesses. Niggas in the hood is fucked up on Section 8. I came from the bottom of the bottom. Y'all love that. Yo! I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, and I, I got it. hundred percent right, bro. I got. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. I got one more. This this is probably my favorite one that I I kind of had to touch on. If I can find it, I don't think I can find it. Oh man, I can't find it, man. Somebody I know took it down. What what the one where he was yelling when he was about to fight um famous Dex, yo. Oh, that one was funny. Oh, yeah. Oh, that one was funny, bro. Pull your chest up then. Oh, that one was funny, man. He took off his coat on the oh, FaceTime. Oh, man, that one was funny, man. Jesus Christ, that one was funny. So anyway, is Soldier Boy, is he a popular fool or is he a marketing genius? A marketing genius. Why? Because we are talking about him nonstop, nonstop over the past three weeks, and we weren't talking about him at all before that. So he put himself in everybody's mouth. I think I got it. Pause. It's him the famous Dak, Joe. I want to beat your ass, nigga. 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 He's punching his fist. He's punching his fist. So, popular fool or marketing genius? Marketing genius. Are we going to have to start looking at Soldier Boy like the guy, man? I don't know about the guy, but he definitely know what he's doing. And it's definitely well-planned and well-orchestrated. I like when someone hit him he, about when he said he made 100 mil, and then Charlamagne was like, well, 
blah, blah, blah. You only really made, I think, like one mil, 100,000. He was like, well, millions is millions. <laughs> and then he said something else. And then Soldier Boy was like, oh, you talking about facts? Like, bro, some of this stuff with Soldier Boy, man, you know, you, I don't know. I think you got to start taking it a little bit seriously. I think he, I think he might have a right to kind of hit this little braggadocious thing. I think he might have a right to kind of say something about, like, when it comes to streaming and all that. You think he's the reason for streaming? You think he's the reason why we doing what we doing right now? You think he changed the game? He did change the game. He changed because of the way he broke out. He broke out through the internet. He broke out through the internet. He was smart enough to produce his own stuff and own his own stuff, and he's still riding around in Lamborghini trucks and furs to this day. This is 10 years later. <laughs> what did you think about when he said he was from Compton? I, I thought he's from Mississippi. I mean, wherever he's from, it doesn't matter. <laughs> wherever he's from, we going to crack on him and joke on him about it regardless. Drake but, yeah, but he laughing to the bank with it though. So he t- he you know has as you know you can make the comparison, but I I think he's like someone that maybe a six nine might have got that from, but took it too far. Mm. If that makes sense, like we are looking at Soldier Boy, but we're laughing. Versus, I think with six nine, it was more like, yo, I can't believe he said that this kid is about to get shot, or something's bad about to happen to this kid. But with Soldier Boy, I think it's more like no one necessarily is angry at him, even though he's saying some off the wall stuff. When you talking about you got your chick stolen and somebody nutted up in there and all of that, like if you are a tiger and somebody said that to you, or and you know he he's saying all that. Do you want you want to throw them hands on Soldier Boy? Or you just look at it as a joke. Oh no, he say that you want to throw them hands on him. Yeah, it's true. But I think Tiger's like chilling, smoking, probably looking at that kind of like I I I listen. I I came back with a hit song this year and I'm I'm good. So I don't know what this, what's all this about. No, I think he's a little mad. I think he's a little mad. I ain't gonna lie. I think Tiger is a little mad. Why? <laughs> Why? I mean, it just is. This is a man. Talk about you got your chick took by a nigga. He did say that. you got your chick took. She got it. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He, he did kind of say that. But it's Soldier Boy, though. And Famous Dex, I don't know why he was upset because I think in the interview, Soldier Boy just said that he flew Famous Dex out and he discovered him in there. So I don't know where that anger came from. But the arguing back and forth to me was classic. Like that was classic. Because I don't know if you're just going to keep bucking at each other until who can yell the loudest. Like who's going to actually get on the plane and come see each other? That's my question. Yeah, that's too much. They was just talking. They were just talking. Okay. So but, what are we are we expecting Soldier Boy to drop something real hard just in twenty nineteen? I ain't expecting him to drop nothing real hard, but he's gonna drop something. You think so? Yeah, he's gonna drop something. Big Draco? Yeah, he definitely gonna drop some music. Last time I checked, he said don't call him Soldier Boy anymore. No he said call him Soldier Man. Soldier Man. <laughs> <laughs> Big Draco. Yeah. That well, guy. I don't know, man. Listen, I think Soldier Boy, he definitely had our attention this week. He definitely was the one that we was all checking for. So if you wasn't a fan of Soldier Boy, and what did you say his music went up streaming wise? 78%. I mean, you might become Kiss a Me Through the Phone. You might money. be playing that right now. You might go back to the ringtone rap. Cause Soldier Boy ain't playing out here. So, you know, Drake. And the memes were funny. Like they were hilarious. Oh God, man. So shout out to him. I guess we come to the conclusion here that he's DJ a marketing memes genius. Was funny too. Like how much it costs to get in the club? Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. <laughs> hey, if you Drake, are you Can mad? Can I request a song? Request. If you Drake, are you mad? Nah, Drake's not mad. Yeah, hey, I don't see Drake being mad at nothing. Nah, Drake's not mad. Yeah, I don't see Drake being mad at that. Drake ain't paying that to attention. Um, big shout out to all my comic book fans. This past weekend, the Punisher season two, um, happened. So I'll make sure I'm gonna check that out. And shout out to all my people who are really still just trying to make it through the government shutdown. You know, our, our hearts are, are with you. Um, we ain't really tap on this real quick, but what did you think about people getting mad at Gladys Knight for performing the national anthem at the Super Bowl? Same thing. I mean, I think she was actually at games too. It's Gladys Knight, yo. Like, it's a legend. Lita, it's Gladys Knight, yo. It's Gladys Knight. I mean, support is support. No matter who it's from, it's still support. But my thing is, y'all wasn't checking. Like, some of y'all young people that would be upset, y'all y'all wasn't playing Gladys Knight in the first place. Like, she, her, her, what she's done has been solidified. If Gladys Knight want to go out there and sing National Anthem, let her sing National Anthem. I mean, I think it's the NFL is just, I mean, strategically genius, of course, in every way. They're going to they're gonna capture the, they are old, in Atlanta. the old generation that catch her and, 
the the mid 40s, <laughs> 30 to 40, 50 range. Right. And then they get Travis and, and capture the 30 and under. It's, it's strategic. They know exactly what they're doing and they're strategically placing these artists where they want to capture the uh, to capture the demographics that they want. And if they get the game that they want, you know, which what what, what, what game you think the NFL want for Super Bowl? Uh, game the NFL want? They probably want um New Orleans and um New Orleans and Kansas City. The high flying scoring. Or um or LA and Kansas City because that well last time they played it was like forty eight to fifty two and it was like a back and forth game. Hey, man. Patrick Mahomes, man, if he um win, he'd be a black quarterback winning Super Bowl. He ain't black, he mixed. I mean, you know, we'll take him. Yeah, he mixed. Russell yeah. Wilson is mixed. Yeah, but Russell a little bit more to the black side. Is he? I don't know. At least he, I guess he's he a little dark. You look I at, mean, if we're going to accept Russell, we can accept Patrick. As well. That's my point. Come on, bro. I mean, let's, let's, for what we know of Russell right now, we're going to accept Russell, who is a black man, we can accept Patrick Mahomes. Dog. Man, if the KKK walking down the street, who getting lynched? They go look at Patrick. They're going to take nah, him just because. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, nah, they're going to nah. take him just because. They're going to grab Russell up and say, we about to go for a ride, boy. Oh, no, Russell going. Russell in the car. They going, we're going for a Hands ride, down. boy. I mean, Pat, he Pat, he he going to get he gonna get a slide. He going to make walk off. Yeah, yeah, Ru- Russell out of there. Russell out of here. Yeah, he I might, don't know. Pat might not get the reckless eyeball in charge. Um, now they catch him with the earrings and them loops. And the way he got his hair cut, they're going to look at him and be like, they're going to tilt sideways and get him. Mm. And when he and when, and when he's tanned a little bit, out playing in the sun, they're going to get him. So, you know, here's what it is, man. All right. Speaking of that, I mean, for everybody that was talking, well, you know how um, every time Drake supports a team, it's like a curse or whatever. He supported Alabama this year. They lost. He supported. He was supporting uh, Alabama? Yeah, he supported Alabama this year. I didn't know that. He definitely did. He supported Alabama Jeez. a couple weeks, and they was talking about was that going to be it. And then um, he supported Kentucky. Of course, they never did anything after that. And, I mean, he supported Toronto. They haven't done anything. Jesus. And um, so he's talking about the Drake curse. So Drake, being funny. He wears a sweatshirt with all four teams that are left on it. Oh, really? So yeah, yeah, it's right here. So you can see um, it has all four teams. So he, he can't curse them all. Somebody got to win. So he just <laughs> he's smart. So he just played along with it. So everybody was talking about that. So you can't go after Drake for the Drake curse. On he this does one. jump on the winning circle, though. I give him that. Yeah, and then they stop winning. So but <laughs> this, is true. this is true. So now everybody curses. I ain't Drake seen him in a Kentucky game since. Yeah, everybody's got the Drake curse. So Yeah, that's real. But somebody got to win. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, man, we can get up out of here, man. What you got going on for the rest of the week? Uh, keeping it moving. I'm going to actually, well, I'm going to watch the um, football game, so I guess I'm supporting, so hate me. I mean, there's ain't nothing wrong with that, though. I, I Listen, I, I don't see nothing wrong with that. I don't see nothing wrong. Are you rooting for anybody in particular, or now that your team out, you chilling? I'm rooting for Drew Brees and rooting against Tom Brady. That's not, hey, listen, you can do that from your couch. Without watching the game. So I imagine you for that. Yeah. I imagine you for that. Well, like I said, I'm going to watch my Punisher season two. It came out this past weekend. It's a long weekend, too. Yeah, season two came out this weekend. I didn't know that. I'm going um, to go, I'm to go check that out. Yeah. And, um, you know, this is MLK weekend. So, you know, I'm going to be I'm gonna be chill. Are you make, Are you playing anywhere? Yeah, I had the um, spot last night. We did um, Deja Vu again. No, oh, yeah, did? Out. Okay. Yeah, it was Friday night we did. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh, you was one of those dudes that had the um, flyer with MLK chilling with the with the bottles? No, we ain't had that. You ain't had that? You sure you ain't had that? No, nah, we ain't do that. That was, dis- <laughs> that was disrespectful. We didn't do that. MLK with the gold chains? No, nah, we ain't do chilling that. Chilling with the big booty women? We ain't do none of that. Do you think it's, it, it was well, real quick before we get up out here, do you think it's disrespectful just to say MLK weekend party, period? I mean. I don't well, think it's a, it's still it's a celebration. MLK bash, nigga. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's still a celebration. I mean, it's, we still celebrating them, so. You know, black people, any any cause for celebration is a celebration. <laughs> so them niggas in the clubs actually celebrate MLK while you're up in there? Eh, or we just re- saying that? We just saying that. But oh, okay. I mean, we, I mean, we still thinking about it, and we still happy about him. We still do think about him, so I mean, we still appreciate and benefit from his sacrifices. So. I'm just asking. Yes. I'm just asking. Because, you know, I'm just glad I ain't, I, you know, I'm going to be chilling on Monday. That's what I'm going to be doing. Mm-hmm. Thinking, thinking that. So that's what's up. Yeah, as usual, make sure you check out our platform on all your um, social media things. You can catch us on YouTube. We are now on Spotify. Shout out to that. We are on iTunes. We are on SoundCloud. Go on the search engine, type in Hip Hop Matrix Show, one word, and you got us. You can follow me on my Twitter, at Radio. Follow this man, at DJ Academics. Be blessed, be successful, and we'll talk to you soon. We ghost! It's the Hip Hop Matrix Show!